Hi, Dave Woodman, Truth in IT. Welcome to today's webcast, Zero Trust Testing, a brave new world for distributed networks. Today's webcast is sponsored by Keysight, and in just a second, I'm going to be introducing our panel. We're going to be led by Mike Matchett. You know Mike, he is Principal Analyst and CEO with Small World Big Data, and Mike will lead the conversation with George Zekaru, who is Director of Product Management with Keysight Technologies, and Mike and George will be joined by Amritam Putatunda, who is Technical Product Manager uh, with Application and Security with Keysight. Today's webcast will go probably close to an hour. Um, we'll be taking your questions and comments in the chat room. We've got someone from Keysight standing by to answer questions. So uh, anything on the content, please feel free to chat in and someone um, will get right back to you. Of course, we'll be taking a couple of those questions out at the end and having the panel address those directly. And of course, anything about the content, chat those in and Keysight will get back to you immediately. But uh, without further ado, let me hand things over to Mike Matchett. Mike? All right, thanks, Dave. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting topic we've got today. It's about networks, it's about testing them, it's about how do you test something when it starts to get so complex that uh, even uh, the testing itself comes into question and it comes into play. Uh, we want to test performance, we want to test security, and we got to do it in a zero trust way these days. A whole new world of testing needs to come about. Uh, with that, let's uh, let's talk. So, uh, George, Zach, uh, should I call you Zach? Yes, Zach. It was great. Nice meeting Zach, you all. Zach, Zach. Um, and uh, and Amritam, uh, welcome. Uh, so. Uh, we're going to also talk for a few minutes, uh, go, th go, th go through some presentations you have, and then we'll have a demo. Uh, so hang on for that, and uh, we'll, we'll actually show you what we're talking about here in some depth, which is which is a pretty cool thing. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm looking forward to that, Amr and Tom. Uh, but let's just start here where we're talking about networks. What has happened in networking where it has gotten difficult? You, performance testing and security testing used to just be you, you poke at things. And, and you poke at all the holes. What's gone on uh, to make things complex? Yeah, great, uh, great question. So I, I think what we're seeing is this rapid adoption of virtualization, cloud, and distributed cloud computing that has changed everything for us, right? So companies and, and the industry is moving from this centralized uh, compute model that was prevalent in, in our networks for, I don't know, the last two decades. And um, uh, in, 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 in this centralized model, we used to have a perimeter-based approach to security, right? Um, obviously, this model evolved over time. And uh, now with the <clears throat> distributed cloud model uh, approach, you, you have more of a borderless security uh, implementation, right? So the applications have moved from on-prem into the cloud. We have multiple points of presence, multiple applications distributed in, in different clouds. And uh, uh, this traffic pattern that we used to have from the branch to the data center has moved from uh, anywhere to the cloud, right? And uh, this, this evolution of the traffic pattern really impacts not only the security of, of the networks, but also has a significant impact in how we deliver quality of experience. This change of distributed cloud was really driven by um, vendors and uh, service operators to provide a better user experience to, to the customer. So moving those applications closer to the user uh, aims to deliver that quality of experience. And when you, when you start to do that, uh, you can't just test you know, in some network traffic that you captured. Now you've got to almost get into the game yourself and have your network testing uh, really uh, dive another level deeper. Maybe you could explain a little bit about what, what, just at a high level, what you have to do. Yeah, so maybe before we dive um, a lot into the subject, maybe we can start with a simpler question, right? Yeah. Like what is this testing that we are talking about and who can actually benefit from it? And uh, as a company, right, so Amrita and, and myself we are coming from Ixia Communications. Ixia was uh, the leader in network and application uh, security testing. And um, uh, particularly our group has been focused on what we call application delivery network testing and network security uh, validation, right? So when, when, we, when we say application delivery, we think about 
uh, application delivery controllers, right, the load balancers, all that infrastructure that helps you to, to deliver the applications end to end. And uh, when we speak about network infrastructure, here you have all that content aware uh, security devices, right? The, the deep packet inspection technology. So you have the next generation firewall, the unified thread management, intrusion prevention, URL filtering, DDoS. So all that spectrum of, of devices has been the focus for our company in, in, in all this time. And uh, this change, right? Like if we look at the evolution of the, of the networks, it started with everything being on-premise, right? The security happened at the border. We've created hardware-based solutions. All of them had a monolithic architecture. So you got the big iron firewall, carrier grade or enterprise grade, and you were able to inspect a lot of traffic and apply different security rules to clean that traffic. Now, <clears throat> Similarly, the test solutions follow the similar pattern, right? We also deliver a hardware-based approach and we were able to, uh, to validate this type of security controls and application delivery networks by placing, um, let's say, sur surrounding that system on the test with traffic that is created by simulated or emulated clients and emulated servers, right? So if you look from the perspective yeah. of uh, a network equipment manufacturer, right? They are always challenged and they say, okay, how do I protect this network? And they come up with innovation in next generation firewall, for example. And with that innovation, they need to make sure that their firewall will operate properly if they go to Best Buy or eBay or AT&T and so on. So obviously the first challenge that they have is how do I recreate all the, the traffic pattern that I have in this network and how can I do it at scale, right? And, and that traffic will help them understand what is the performance in different conditions, where do they have gaps, where do they need to improve, and at the same time, they also need to answer the question, how do I improve the security efficacy in this network, right? So for many years, more than 15 years, we provided this type of solutions that created a blend of uh, good traffic, bad traffic, and, and malicious traffic. Um, allowing them to re replicate in a realistic fashion what is happening into the network. Mm -hmm. So again, when we speak about testing, we really focus on this type of infrastructure elements. And the way we do the validation is in a, in a closed loop environment where our simulated clients and servers exchange traffic between them with the purpose of benchmarking the performance and the security efficacy. Okay, so <clears throat> again, if, you, if, if we look from a security perspective, how this evolution happened, we, we started obviously focusing on, on the perimeter in the data center. Then the VPNs came up and gave us another extension of that perimeter, but it, it, it did not increase the security per se, right? It just gave you more entry points into the network. And uh, finally, we had the virtualization and cloud that really changed everything for us, right? So the, the cloud, uh, was initially a, a centralized cloud, but now we have these edge clouds mm -hmm. that makes everything distributed. So obviously with the, with the um, uh, emergence of distributed clouds, NEMS also had to transform themselves, right? So network equipment manufacturers. And we've seen you know, new solutions like SDN, uh, SASE that, that provides uh, connectivity at a cheaper price and also uh, security in a centralized fashion. Right? And of course, on top of this, we have this uh, zero trust approach to security, which mm. really is just a, uh, let's say, a, a mindset on how you, how you look at the security, right? And um, uh, if we look from a technology perspective, because I think this is where a lot of people have the challenge, right? Like, okay, zero trust, give me the product, right? Like what, what is solving that challenge, the products are really the same, right? So we still need to rely on the access list, on the firewall, on the next generation firewall, on, on content inspection devices. This type of security controls have been in place for a very long time to establish trust, right? Because at one point in time, you still need to, you still need to trust that whatever traffic you want to receive it is a clean traffic and uh, you can trust, right? But what, what has changed a lot is 
how applications are getting access to the services. Now, now you need to authenticate every application, any transaction that is happening into the network. And, and that's fundamentally really a new set of security policies that for us is just forcing us to be authenticated when we simulate this, this good traffic and bad traffic into the network. All right, so, so we've gone on a journey here from, <clears throat> as you talked about, just testing at the perimeter or, or poking at things, running synthetic transactions, knowing what every, where everything is and it's all in the data center to a place where we've got not just VPNs, but we've got things distributed across a hybrid cloud architecture. So that makes it difficult to know where things are at and to know what all the components we need to test are. Uh, and now on top of that, with ransomware and everything else going on, you're just talking about security is just really ramped up, right? So yes. the, the components that you're testing all might have a zero trust uh, kind of policy themselves that you as a testing tool have to adhere to. Uh, and that that can be very difficult. Uh, is that is that sort of lead us to sort of this problem that um, you know the NEMS and the 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 network equipment folks uh, aren't able to test their current uh, current customer environments? I mean, is is that is that what we're looking at? Yes, thanks, Mike. And I will take that question. And I, I would <clears throat> have to say that's a that's a great question uh, because essentially. Uh, what we saw and what Zach was explaining is, is a transition in networks and evolutions in networks. And one of the things about evolution in network that's different than evolutions in let's say human or biology is that uh, when a better variant comes, more fit variant comes, the previous one gets completely replaced, right? You, you know, if you are a doctor, you are treating homo sapiens, you don't need to understand the pathology of homo erectus. However, in technology, things just get stacked up. Right, especially if it's a very, very popular technology, then it's very difficult to replace. And that's where the testing methodologies or testing identities needs to change, where you have to see how you can test all your security devices that you're offering in cloud. You have to test if you are actually enabling zero trust by having an authentication identity provider integrated, or you have policy enforcement points as, as features and functionalities in your product, you need to have a test for scaling. Because essentially the goal you have is, doesn't uh, change very much. You are still securing users. You are still have to maintain quality of experience, except in this case, the user profiles have become much more varied. Yeah. Great point, uh, Amrita. I, I, and I think what is important here is that all this change starts with network human manufacturers, right? They are the first one that needs to, to take this innovation, put it in, in the product, create solutions that are distributed in, in, in this new modern architecture. And obviously they need to make sure that everything is working and uh, they can deliver that quality of experience to their customers. I just have a, a sort of a side question here. I mean, we talk about performance testing, we talk about security testing. Have those worlds collided a bit more? Have, do, when you talk about testing at scale, do we have to test both performance and security together at scale? Yeah, I think they, they always went hand in hand, right? There is always a balance between security and performance. And uh, if, if we have to summarize what we've learned in 15 years, is really that this um, balance really stands out completely differently across vendors. And uh, we, we've seen it where the difference, it can be like 10 times in better performance per throughput when you compare like two different vendors trying to achieve uh, similar security. And uh, similarly, when you look at the security efficacy, there's also a big gap between vendors. And um, in, in general, what we've seen, in order to maximize the performance when vendors are, are trying to benchmark their tools, um, they, they, they see the degradation in performance as they, um, as they enable different security layers, right? So I get the performance only right. with the firewall enabled then the performance drops if I have intrusion prevention, it drops even more if I have the gateway antivirus and so on. So um, obviously those security functions have a, an impact in, in, in the overall performance. And uh, that's why they need to be validated together. At the same time, I think another, um, uh, another problem we've seen with, uh, with, with this type of solution is that, especially, especially as you operate in, 
in a um, high performance mode, right? Like you, you, you have the CPU utilization at, at the high rate, the memory utilization at the high rate. Uh, depending on how the device is configured, you may actually start inspecting some of the traffic. So, so bad malicious traffic can, can get in. And as we move towards cloud, I think what is an important takeaway for the network equipment manufacturers is that they have to deal with that elastic aspect of how the cloud security is being enforced. Ah. So what am I talking about here is, in general, you have, let's say, on Amazon or any cloud service provider, I have a pool of, let's say, next generation firewalls. And as more traffic is, is getting through my security infrastructure, I need to trigger uh, another instance of the next generation firewall to, uh, to be able to handle all that traffic that I see in the network. Now, obviously this, this traffic element, the, this scalability element can be triggered by multiple metrics like throughput, connections per second, and so on, as well as infrastructure specific metrics like CPU utilization, memory utilization. So you can also have um, a, an automation behind where the security policy needs to be automatically applied to the new instance of the next generation firewall. So the question is, you know, like when I have this scale up and scale down approach, is my security policy really being enforced across all the, all the next generation firewalls? And, and I think that is creating a, an opportunity for us in the test industry to innovate because in the past, all the test tools were designed with that monolithic aspect in mind. They were uh, inflexible in the sense that all that configuration that you had at the beginning of the test was persistent during the duration of the test. And, and now with the way we see the uh, the requirements changing in order to validate that elasticity aspect, uh -huh. you need to have a dynamic way of creating the, the traffic and, and spin up another instance of that simulated server that is behind the protected file. Right? It's, so, yeah, it, 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 I mean, it's almost like not only are performance and security intricately linked in testing, but so is scaling. And if I'm, if I'm hearing, if I'm hearing and understand what you're talking about, the not only does the application scale at different periods for performance to react to what the clients are doing, but as the security levels could change as that scaling takes place uh, and what and impact performance as well as you turn on and off layers of security. So that seems like a pretty complex challenge. Yes, it, it is. And that's why yeah. I think it, it really requires a, a brand new approach of testing, right? We, we actually had to go back to the whiteboard and look at all the challenges that we have in this distributed cloud environment. And they said, okay, here are the attributes of, of, of this uh, test solution that we need to, to address. And we started from scratch, right? We, we, we had the traditional tools that we used for many years. We, we've been very successful and we continue to be very successful in the market with them. But, you know, really working in this cloud distributed environment required a true cloud native approach where um, we have software traffic generators and um, this distributed aspect of, of our implementation. Oh, awesome. So uh, when we talk about distributed networks, you know, we mentioned that there can be hybrid cloud challenges, right? So we know that there's pieces of a app, given application from a user perspective that could be in different places and maybe even operated by different uh, operators or service providers, right? And we still uh, have a testing responsibility at some level, uh, even though pieces may be operated in turn by, by other folks. Uh, what, what are some of the other challenges when, when you think about distributed network and distributed network testing that come up? Yeah, so I think that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, if I put myself in the shoes of a network equipment manufacturer, probably when we say test, the first use case that comes to mind is like, how do I validate this new innovation, this new product that I'm, I'm putting on the market. But testing has value across multiple points in the customer journey, right? So you build the product, now you need to sell it. So how do I do that? First, I need to educate my, my sales team, right? Okay. And the best way to educate someone and, and bring that confidence that your product actually delivers on the business values that, uh, that you target is to demonstrate it. And we provide <laughs> that ability to 
to bring a large volume of traffic that is coming across different points in, 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 in the world and try to demonstrate the scalability and the security efficacy, right? So training or sales enablement can be a very good use case for network equipment manufacturers. The second, the, the third part is proof of concepts, right? It's like now I need to go to a customer and everyone comes and tells the same story. We are the best. I have that technology and that technology and use our, our product and uh, uh, you'll be in good hands. But, you know, uh, NEMS customers, right? The enterprises, service providers, spouse service providers, they are looking for proofs that you are able to, uh, to deliver that performance. We need to have the ability to be platform agnostic, deliver it everywhere on-prem cloud and uh, so on. Uh, the ability to operate in, in networks in a transparent way. So if I have a proxy, a load balancer, it's not interrupting my traffic. Elasticity aspect that we, we stressed a lot. Um, and for content aware devices, the ability to really recreate that mix of application traffic you have, the, the unique payloads um, in, in the protocols uh, with, with the zero trust strategy now, we also have to, to authenticate the traffic that we, we simulate, right? So before you, you send any traffic, it needs to go through that authentication method. And, and Amrita will, uh, will demonstrate it later, as well as obviously the, the distributed aspect, right? The distributed aspect, I think it's also paramount. So we have, you know, we, we, we have this complexities of performance, we have these complexities of security, we have these complexities of scale, and we're trying to maintain this level of automated testing uh, for a lot of the use cases you talked about, Zach. Uh, mm -hmm. And it just seems like it's gotten more complicated with zero trust. Now, does, does the testing that you do have to become part of the zero trust fabric? Do you authenticate? Do, 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 do all your transactions become trusted? Do, do we mm -hmm. trust the testing tools? Yeah, I, I understand the question. Yeah, so I think the, the testing can be done in an evolutionary way, right? Like I, I can start each, each element uh, individually, and I think that will be a, a big part of the testing. But what we are trying to stress here is that that testing that is done in isolation in the lab is not enough. Uh, I, I spoke about the fact that um, the traffic now is cloud sending, so we are losing control over the networks. If I am a network equipment manufacturer that is building now on Amazon or on Azure or Google Cloud, mm -hmm. I'm losing a lot of control over that network. Right. And imagine just a simple issue as the cloud service provider updating the network interface driver. That can potentially have implication in, in the performance of that vendor and you don't even know, right? So um then you have like in sd1 deployments right the last mile is broadband access right it's not a private network anymore it's not mpls and you lose that control um, now uh, vendors are also creating different of points of presence to optimize for this type of issues like if if one point of presence has an issue then you, you try to redirect to the to the next one that will deliver that quality of experience. So the best way to, and I think the only way to validate this type of scenario is to do it directly in, in that um, environment. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about doing our testing in an environment that's production basically, because there's no other way to simulate uh, all the different components now that we're in a distributed world, right? So another complexity. Uh, let's let's actually talk about the solution you guys bring uh, from from Keysight here. I believe it's called Cyperf. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, how Cyperf is 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 architected. Absolutely, and um, it's truly industry's first instantly scalable zero trust solution. And we say that because we actually had to go to our drawing boards and build something ground up <laughs> to take care of all the challenges that Zach described. Right. So few things that we did. First is to give this, you know, remove this line between lab and production, pre-production, live. We had to create omnipotent agents that can be installed in a variety of systems, cloud, virtual machines, containerized pods, anywhere in the environment. That was very important to go to the complete gamut of the different uh, technologies and security that is available to us. 
And this enables us to do both pre-deployment and live testing. We can create digital twins, basically oh. creating exact replica of how the applications, users, traffic, you know, all the Facebook stuff, Office 365 that you do in real life. How, how do you do this in, in, a, in a live environment? And then we also wanted to ensure that it creates the realism that, that we need, like all the traffic, all the applications, all the attacks needs to look exactly how they were in the live network. Because if our traffic doesn't look like that, most of the security tools are smart enough to understand that this is something that's not real and they can block it because you know it's, it might be a security risk. So the traffic needs to be very realistic for the network and the devices that are systems that are sitting on the, uh, un, under load and looking at those traffic. It also needs to have the same kinds of authentications, authorization, since certificates, TLS, username, passwords. So creating that realism at scale was a huge, huge challenge for us. And that's what we did with Cyperf. You can not only do these authentication authorizations, create Office 365 flows, Salesforce flows, you can also do this at a very high scale. So should you, try to measure your actual performance numbers when your security devices and application control devices are deployed in these environments, you will be able to do it and you'll be able to rely on it because that's done with data, data traffic that is much more closer to real environment. And of course, this also meant that we needed these agents to be emulating the environments that they are in, which means, for example, you can be in an elastically scalable network, right? Where the ports will come up and go down based on, uh, based on the need. This was unthinkable before, right? Our test tools needed all the ports to be green and all everything green lighted before even starting the test. But here we are with Cyperf, we have these agents that would come up and go down while the test is running. This so also the, so, so, the to... so the test agents have to come and go. Yes, yes. That's what you're saying. It's like it's not it's not just a static load generator out there anymore. We've got exactly. such a dynamic environment that even the test agents have to simulate themselves ramping up and ramping down depending on what's going on in the world. Yeah. And this also gives us the ability to create resiliency and chaos testing, which basically means you can forcefully bring down a test agent while the traffic is running. And you can see whether your security, your redundancy, your failovers, all these things that has been done to prevent you from such, a, such kind of situations be tested in this environment so that your customers, when they face this issue in, in actual environment, doesn't really have to go through any, any kind of pain point because you've already handled it. I like the idea that you were talking about of, of basically a digital twin kind of concept in mind where you're uh, creating this ability to really, uh, I, you know, I know we use the word simulate, but almost emulate what's going on uh, in, in a production run normally and then try to tweak it to make it do abnormal things. It's kind of cool. Exactly. And, you know, it comes from that exact theory of garbage in, garbage out. If your data, if your test traffic, like you said, right, if you cannot trust the test tool and the traffic that is generating, can you really trust its results, right? So that's why it was very important to go beyond the, the realms of sim simulation to, to the emulation and get it as close as it would be in real life. Do you, do you have any sort of rough figures of scalability here when we're talking with what Cyperf can, can deal with? Just an example, that's maybe? That's a great question. And because it's a software agent, it's that number is hard to find because depending on how much hardware you throw to it, you get to that numbers. We have simulated millions of connections and you know hundreds of gigs of encrypted traffic with Cyperf, depending on what kind of high-end chipsets and CPUs we have used. We've also tried to ensure running it in different types of cloud instances, you know, heavy, heavy metal kind of instances in different clouds to get to that max levels that these cloud vendors are actually. Uh, publishing their data sheets. And sometimes we go much beyond, sometimes we are not able to scale and we can see that the CPU cores and memory is not utilized well. The whole purpose here though, from the you know, bigger point of that question is that our product is designed to scale to the max level, max juice that is available to it. And if it cannot, you are able to see through metrics, packet drops and all the other statistics available to you where exactly is the choking point so that you know whether it's the device under test, whether this is the cloud, whether it's the internet service provider or the hardware itself where the test agents are running uh, is the choking point in this whole whole system. Yeah, right. well, I, I think uh, an easier answer is you can achieve carrier grade performance very easy with Cypher. All right, and uh, yeah, what I would love to do right now, Amr Tom, is actually see it and, yep. and have, have you show me some of the things that you can do with this because 
we've had a pretty high level discussion here about distributed networks and hybrid cloud and zero trust, but nothing's going to beat actually seeing this. So, absolutely, right. let's get to it. Can't wait. But before I go, I wanted to give one more slide of how exactly this product works, right? It's very important to understand because this is, this is again a little bit of a, a shift from our usual ways of operations. So Cyperf is a pure play software. It's not SaaS, it's a product. And you first install the Cyperf as controller. So this is the mothership. This is something okay. that uh, you know, all your users, all the QAs, all the engineers can share between each other. So this is a single controller that has the UI, the automation, the framework, and all the other stuff. The agents are these teeny tiny pods, containerized agents, software, virtual machines that you can deploy all around, right? This is where you ask the question, from where to where you need to send the traffic? Because the KPIs, you know, the throughput, performance, CPS, transactions, all this remains uh, the, all the all the KPIs of test still remain same, right? But the, what you have to ask is, which becomes my client, which becomes my server, and what are the device under test that I need to send the traffic through? So these agents registers to this controller. You can see them. Then you configure your applications and attacks, and you run your tests. So here, what I'm going to do in this next few minutes that I have is to go through this end-to-end -end architecture that uh, we talked about and ensure that Cyperf is able to not only stack and test the earlier uh, technologies, but also can go and uh, test the modern technology but, and also combine them all together into the zero trust fold. So let's uh, do this with this. So this is how the UI looks like. And you can see the different sessions here. And what I've done is that I've pre-run some of these tests so that you know. So we start with the simplest of the tests, right? This is something that most of the viewers already know about, how to generate traffic between two endpoints. So this is how a Cyper session looks like. So you have your clients uh, in one side and servers in the other side. You have your IP addresses that, sim that is simulated. And this these are two on-prem clients that I've mm -hmm. used. And I have created some application mixes, right? So that's that's important, right? You have to create a network persona. So this is your evolutions, very early phase where most of the times you were in uh, offices, the work was done in office, and then there was a hard cut. When you come back to home, you cannot log back in. But it's important to know how your uh, test results look like, how you have a baseline of all your next generation firewalls, IPS, IDSs that are already running in a customer environment, right? So you have to see how much max performance you can get. And as I mentioned, the statistics will give you exactly those numbers. You can see your performance, you can see your mixes and how much performance you get with a particular mix. You can also see uh, through agent metrics, the CPU and memory and all those things. So this is what I was talking about when I mentioned that, hey, you know, it might be your uh, hardware where you are running this software that might be overwhelmed. It might have some CPUs that are completely uh, filled so, out. You yeah. might have a memory so problem. So I'm getting a little infrastructure monitoring while I'm doing this as well. So I'm testing security performance and how well the infrastructure is doing. That's pretty good. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's the whole point of first establishing a strong yeah. baseline in this evolution, because one, unless you know what you have or how your existing product looks like with, let's say, vanilla security, nothing there, you would not know the impact when you're adding up and stacking up new technologies on top of it. And as I mentioned, in this evolutionary phase, the first part of it is the simplest one. And this also is a good setup for introducing you to the UI and familiarizing you. Like I mentioned, in this UI, you have this controller running somewhere and we have two agents. These agents are on-prem in somewhere in Keysight office and we are sending traffic between them. And the, the network infrastructure here can be a transparent proxy, a NAT, or anything that is sitting in between that's looking at all these applications uh, silently without the users not knowing. This is how networks used to look like, like 15 years back when you know most of the work was done uh, at offices. You had your uh, applications like database, SMTP, HTTP. So that's what I was trying to do with this first. So it's a small organization with 1,000 users. And in the interest of time, I have pre-done some of these tests. So you'll already see statistics because I've run it. And you can see what kind of throughput I'm getting, how many users are there, how many concurrent connections, my transactions, my application mix, and if, if those mixes are getting respected. You can also go into details, a little bit of details of each of these applications. Like you can see, okay, how is my SMTP flows looking? Or you can go and see 
the CPU and metrics of each of these agents where the Cypher uh, software is running and whether we are maximizing the performance, whether there are certain CPUs that are getting like 100% while some are lower. So you will be able to do all these things. This gives our NEMS a very good baseline to start with, you know, your transactions, performance, applications, and everything else. And now you pile up features, or in other my words, move on in the evolutionary process to add features and see what kind of impact they have as you add it on. So moving on in our journey of evolution, our next point would be the rise of VPN. VPN came in like 20 years back, but the technology really took off 15 years back and really, really, really took off during the pandemic when everybody had to work from home. So for, for our target of Cypher becoming a single tool that can do all these rounds of testing, we also had to ensure that VPN is added. And some of you might be thinking why I'm talking about VPN when it's a zero trust session and we have to talk about software defined parameters or SDP. Trust me, in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about it as well. But if anybody thinks that VPN is going away, you know, I have a message for you. The amount of requests we get for VPN performance testing in the last few years has been phenomenal. So VPN is not going away that soon. So we wanted to ensure Cypher also can generate VPN communication. So here you can see it's the same kind of topology like we said about on-prem, except this time our agents are going to sim simulate VPN tunnels. And what they will do with this is that you can configure your tunnels, you can specify what kind of VPN vendor you need, some profiles specific to that VPN and how many tunnels you need to set up and things like that. You can also specify the applications, different types of applications or attacks, and all this will be sent through the encapsulated VPN tunnels. But the whole point of this evolution, evolution is everything is coexisting, everything is stacking up between, uh, on top of each other. So I don't want to run this test singularly. Let's join this back to our initial on-prem friends. So these are our on-prem and these are agents. So not right now we have four agents. Two of them are doing on-prem on -prem traffic and the rest two are doing VPN from a remote location. So, 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 so this would be kind of like what happened when we all had to start working from home, exactly. right? So everyone was in the exactly. data center in the, in the building and then suddenly we're all now distributed geographically and all this VPN traffic really ramps up big time, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and and that's what I try to do. You know, if you remember yeah. when I was doing yeah. on-prem, I had 1,000 users and now I have 5,000 users with 4,000 of them are trying to do VPN. So that kind of yeah. was our pandemic life. And you can see all the applications also merging in together with our old on-prem applications, with some VPN apps, with Cyperf, with all the applications available to you, you can do that. And if I show you the statistics now, and you can see how incremental statistics based on the configuration gets added. So we have got some other little more throughput now, which is expected. We have more users, we have transactions, connections, but we also have VPN specific statistics, like how many VPN tunnels were established. And you can dug, dug in deep here, like, okay, is there a failure? Were, were there some timeouts? What, what, was there any big latencies and any kind of specific failures? Because ultimately as a test tool, our big purpose is to find issues in, before the customers find it. So these failures would help you navigate through, understand the scale that you can offer uh, and such. And again, it's the same kind of statistics is there, applications, traffic agents, going into deep. If you want to, you can do that. Now let's continue our evolutionary journey to the third phase. And this is where cloud came in, right? And when we were go walking around, you know, a few years back in RSA or Black Hat, everybody was saying cloud is coming. Well, during the remote workforce, the cloud came, it got deployed and it's everywhere now. So we were talking a lot about hybrid offices where we have remote and uh, local office. Cloud made possible hybrid networks. Now we have security devices and everything else that can be so easily deployed in cloud because many of the customers workloads, data center, data centers, and even individual client PCs have been moving to cloud. So it was very important for us with Cyper when we were designing it to get cloud and cloud related testing integrated as part of it. So that's what I did. So you can see singularly, again, I'm going to this session where I've just have cloud clients and cloud servers. So here you can see that I have a client deployed in cloud and I've set this up with IP and Mike, you'll be very interested in the next one, what I show for the server side, I did not use IP address, but I used tags. 
This okay. allows me to take care of elasticity and scale and agents and servers popping up and down during runtime, right? Because their IP addresses would not be known before the test starts because they don't exist when the test starts. It's only due to the test, due to the scaling, or due to the uh, replicas being uh, created, we see these new agents. And, and so I'm really testing the elasticity of my cloud service while I'm doing the, the, the testing here. And, and is, this, is, this, is this, by the way, can you also support ramping up testing or just full on testing? Absolutely. So yeah. that's, that's the whole point here as well, right? And that's where yeah. things get more interesting, where you can go to your advanced tests, uh, objectives and create your different types of RAM schedules to okay. create ramping okay. profiles so that you can hit those scaling policies, uh, which you know your customers are going to hit when they have a sudden burst of users coming into the network. I, totally, and I want I want to see how this runs. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in in terms and, and of sales, I, so you got by the way, no, no, you got Salesforce in there as well as Office three sixty five. I mean, everyone's using Skype and, and Zoom and some and some things exactly. like that as well. So it's a good that's a good mix. Exactly. So when we are doing cloud, we cannot really run our uh, classic legacy workloads. We have to come up with new workloads. So uh, that's that's also another advantage that gave in. Now we know the drill by now. I am showing you individually this test, but when we ran it, we ran it together because that's what is happening right now. Everything coexists. So we already know our own on-prem friends. Let me expand it a bit. We already know our VPN friends and here comes our cloud friends. But with them, we also have the ability to specify uh, devices and FQDNs like Secure Access Service Edge, load balancers, and you, know, you can create configurations like health checks, advanced health checks. Uh, so this allows you to bring in a lot of this new security devices that NEM vendors are pushing like cloud network firewalls, um, you know, and uh, cloud VPN, secure web gateways, uh, content delivery networks. So any of these uh, systems that are running on cloud can now be tested both for performance and for security. So all this together, again, I did the same thing where I have all these applications now added together and ran this test so that uh, we can have these statistics to look at. And, and just like the previous ones, I'm going to look at some specific statistics here. So we see the throughput again, this has gone up a little bit up, our transactions have gone up, all these application mixes are going through, the VPNs are there, but what I need to look here is this. So if you remember, previously we had two agents at one for VPN and one for on-prem and two agents at the server side. In this test, we should have had three agents at the client and three agents at the server. But you can see there was a blip and there came the fourth agent. So what I did here is I went to my load by auto, uh, auto scaling group and I had scaling policies that would scale up a fourth agent while the test is running. So this is what I did with AWS and you can see this in action in statistics, let me show you that. So if I go to my agent statistics, I can show you this exact auto scaling that happened during real time. So I will select specific statistics. So this was my first agent that was there for the entire time. And this is what came in later. And you can see how beautifully the balance happened. So whatever devices that, was, uh, that I was doing, at least one thing is sure that it did its load balancing work pretty properly. And as the new agents came in, it got distributed. And this can obviously be scaled to a very different level. Like you have 10 different clouds and uh, elastic agents. You can create it in a containerized network where you have replicas, north, south, or east, west traffic as well. So, so devops -y kinds of folks might be interested in this, right? To learn how to set the parameters and policies for how their elasticity and, and expansion works. Absolutely. And because this is an automation friendly product, you can also bring it in your CI CD pipeline where you just pop up these really lightweight agents, do your tests, validate your infrastructure, architecture, whatever you want, and then just spin it off. This also saves you a lot of money because believe it or not, that 10 cents per hour cloud instances can add up very quickly if you have to run, keep them on for long uh, and such. All right, where do we go from here? Absolutely, this is where we go into the most interesting thing and sorry for a very long premise, but now it's time to bring our zero trust networks, right? But before I go and explain how it's done in the product, I wanted to show you the exact transaction that we play in here because it's, it's pretty interesting, complicated, but fun. So with Zero Trust, what we had to do is, let's say Cypher client would generate a, a request. 
this would ideally be stopped by something called a policy enforcement point. This can be a next generation firewall, a security device, anything that acts at it, as it, and it provides some challenges like, hey, I need you to authenticate first before you can access this, whatever application that you need. And it generally gets uh, routed to an identity provider like Okta or things like that, where you are supposed to give your user authentications and things like that. And this provides you a token that in turn becomes an authorization cookie. And once you have that, then the flow happens. It's a pretty complicated flow to do by itself, but to do it at scale is a challenge of a different level. So this is what we attempted with Cypher because we knew if we are trying to be a holistic product that can test end to end, we needed to accommodate all these phases. So let's go back to the UI and show these exact, exact components, how it works in Cypher. Yeah, I guess I guess I would. I'm just curious now to see how how we can look and see. Am I getting all the service that I, for example, might have subscribed to from Okta? Am I getting everything that I expect out of Cloudflare? You know, all these service providers that I subscribe to, I can now use this to make sure that I'm getting what I uh, subscribe from them, and that the I'm getting my service levels. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. That that's that's exactly what's our purpose is, and we know the drill by now. I want. I will show you how it looks individually. Now you can see Cyperf has the ability to integrate these components of zero trust, like a policy enforcement point, a identity provider, and you can specify the FKDNs or IP addresses of these. And you can also specify the application that you want to go in. And then you can specify the uh, same agents, right? It's just literally the same agents that okay. you use for all these other purposes like VPN generation, cloud or application or on-prem services would be able to handle this kind of complicated requests with the applications. Now I can break ranks here and just run this test individually and uh, be done with it. But that would also uh, not do justice to that entire flow that I was setting up for the whole time because the whole point of zero trust is that it needs to run and it needs to accommodate everything. We are as strong as our weakest link and zero trust needs to bring everybody in the fold. Now, this looks now like a little bit of a complicated topology, but we are already familiar with our on-prem friends, our VPN friends, and our cloud friends. What we have integrated is the zero trust. And for NEMS here, this is probably the same way your customers would do. They would have certain sections of their systems bringing under zero trust before adapting and bringing everything all together. And you can see this you know, application still remains same. I have uh, reduced some of these applications just so that we can show this in the statistics. And if I go to my statistics, you would see this is the test I kept running for some time. And you can see how the throughput works, how my applications are. We can see some failures here and there is a reason for it. And we have some VPN tunnels, we have our application mixes. But if I go to my new statistic that has been added here, you can specifically see how many transactions were created, how many transactions were um, successful. And I had intentionally had a valid and an invalid transaction so that you know we can see some failures. And you can see a lot of uh, all these individual transactions uh, listed. And Cypher also gives us an ability to provide um, individual statistics like Cloudflare, Okta. You can integrate them, you can edit them so that you can see where exactly in this whole flow of multiple chains, the problem occurs, right? And I know my face uh, exudes trust, but anybody that doesn't believe me, you, I can also show you that this is happening right real time in, in, in this uh, policy enforcement points like uh, Cloudflare. And in, in Okta, we'll see all these logins that are happening. So you can see all these requests going in into these different servers. Uh, this is an actual Cloudflare com console. And you can also see the authentication requests happening uh, in, 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 in Okta, and you can see the whole transaction being taken, being, being done in real time. So I, I could look at my service levels. I can see where something breaks in a long chain of transactions. I can see how my scaling policies are responding to my, my, my loads and seeing if that's appropriate or not appropriate. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, I can see quite a bit of um, different uh, facets of the infrastructure and the cloud usage and things like that as well. So this is pretty cool. I, I, I almost want to say end to end, but there's really no ends to this anymore, right? So what do we exactly. say? Which is the distributed cloud. What do we call it? Edge to edge, edge to cloud <laughs> to edge. I don't know. Yeah, there is no end to end, but this also yeah. you're, you're, you have beautifully set up, uh, set me up for the next step that I, I generally don't need to show this as a demo, 
But what would happen is that zero trust is not a single isolated entity, right? It's it's something where it, you, the whole gamut of things comes up as a policies for authentication and authorization. So a very clear uh, progression for this because there is no end, end to sight is that onboarding new, onboarding our on-prem users, onboarding the more secured networks to the really least secured networks. Like, you know, I say it in jest, but every, every enterprise has this kind of networks. And as a micro segmentation vendor, you need to simulate all this traffic to create those policies. You need to have PPs and IDPs integrated together. And when you test this all together, only then you will see what kind of scale you can get as a product when you are adding these features like micro segmentation, you know, integrating an IDP, and, and what kind of performance impact you have while you are trying to be secure. So that's where you know, this uh, Cyperf can also integrate uh, zero trust and micro segmentation testing. You can add your attacks and applications. I have talked a lot about applications, but you can add attacks here as well. You can create you know, brute force attacks, which is awesome for a zero trust kind of testing. You, know, you can do a lot of authentication and try to see if the server overwhelms. You can also do complicated attacks like adding malware within an Office 365 transaction. All right, so we can do we can do lots of like security hacking kinds of profiles. We can do our ransomware. We might even be able to cleverly put some phishing kinds of simulation type things, uh, the results of that in there. Um, Amr Tom, you know, what if someone would, would like to try this? Is there a way to test this easily or someone could kick the tires and maybe do a little a, a trial of this? Or, you know, how, how much does it take to get this set up? Absolutely. So this, the good news about this is that if you go to our Cyperf website, you know, inkyside.com Cyperf, you, anybody can test a drive for free. So you can just go and click on it and get started. It's a self-paced drive. It gives you a lot of tutorials of what has been already done. So this way you can have a feel of it, understand what it can do in, in, a, in a much more controlled environment. And then if you like it more, you can always ask for much more complicated demos that I did today so that I can take you through uh, or we can take you through those, those setups as well. All right. So uh, I think what I wanted to add is that that sandbox is a complete sandbox. So the user, the, the, the anyone that wants to try it, they only need their browser. That's just it. a browser. All right. Yeah, I, so think, I think we're right. The infrastructure, the security controls, and the cyber soft are all in one sandbox. All right, guys. I thank you. Uh, thank you, Zach. Thank you, Amr Tom. Uh, kind of lot to talk about here, a lot to do, and we're running a little bit out of time. So I think we've got to wrap it up here and hand this back to Dave. All right, guys. Great job. Thanks, Mike. Great job, Zach and Amr Tom. So yeah, we only have time for a couple quick questions. Okay, so this first question came in and it is about supporting uh, SDP environments, software defined perimeter. Um, Amr Tom, you wanna take that one? Yes, thanks a lot, David, and shame on me for not throwing it. Yes, exactly. Uh, VPN is important, but we know with zero trust, what software defined parameters or SDP would make sense. So that's where I do actually had it in one of my demos where you can have VPN clients generating the traffic, you know, our friendly VPN guys, and you could also have SDP agent and generate traffic through it with Cyper. So we can provide, although we cannot go to the same scale as VPN with SDP, but we can provide both of them test and test them together in, in a single test. That's very okay. cool. Cool, cool. Okay, one more question. So Amr Tom, this one has to do with licensing or, or Zach, I don't know if this one's for you, but how is the solution licensed? Um, yeah, so the, the licensing is straightforward. We have a subscription licensing approach. Um, we, we provide 30 day licenses, 90 day licenses and, and in one year increments. Uh, so all of them are options. And uh, the, what we are licensing is the number of agents that you have in the network and the throughput, the overall throughput that you generate. Okay, dynamite. Okay, guys, thanks very much. We are out of time. Thank you all for coming today. I want to thank Zach and Amr Tom with Keysight and, of course, Mike Matchett with Small World Big Data. I'm Dave Littman with Truth and IT. Thanks very much for coming, everyone. We want to wish you all a great day.